screaming a Marhaba. Today I'm going to be talking about my experiences with learning Arabic. If you want to skip forward through the introduction, then please feel free to do so. Otherwise, stay tuned and I'm going to take you through the different sections of this video. So I'm going to be talking about YouTube, apps, podcasts, music you can listen to, ebooks, have I missed anything? TV shows and websites. So the problem is that Jordanian dialect resources are actually really hard to come across. What you can get is Levantine Arabic. And let me tell you, if you are new to the language or you are new to the dialects, Lebanese, Palestinian, Syrian, Jordanian, all the dialects are different. And within the countries themselves, within the regions inside the countries, the dialects are different. When I first started learning Arabic, I just picked up a random Learn Levantine audiobook at my local library. And for about three months, I learned Lebanese dialect which wasn't helpful. That's not to say that people aren't going to understand you, people will understand you, but you know what? If you if you are in that country and you want to learn to communicate with those people, then choose the language that they speak. It just makes sense. Obviously, a lot of these are Palestinian dialect, a lot of these are Syrian dialect, but um, mostly I've kind of, I've, I've aimed it towards things that are generally towards the Jordanian dialect. It's not that easy to find. The first thing that I'm going to address is the difference between learning Fusha or learning Amir. Amir is dialect, it's the spoken Arabic, whereas Fusha is MSA, modern standard Arabic. And that's what you're gonna find on all the news resources. You're gonna find that if you're reading um, anything in, in Arabic language, any books or anything like that. Websites, you know, it's the standardized Arabic that everyone um, across the Arab world is meant to be able to understand. So what people will tell you is that you should learn Fusha, you should learn MSA Arabic first because it gives you the best foundations for learning Arabic. It gives you all of the correct grammar. Whereas um, learning spoken Arabic, it's um, often cases very incorrect. It's um, very kind of um, idiosyncratic. It's not that easy. But my opinion on this, if you are learning from abroad, you are um, taking Arabic as a course at university or college or you are learning it just because you want to kind of have a dip into the Arabic language you don't have any specific country that you're interested in visiting then learn MSA and if you're learning it for academic reasons learn MSA but if you are living in the country or you are preparing to go and live in a certain country I really don't recommend learning MSA for that purpose. In fact, many people have contacted me and told me that they learned MSA before they came to Jordan and they found that people don't understand them. That could be because their accent is wrong. It could be for various different reasons because people should be able to understand MSA. It's kind of strange to me that they wouldn't be able to, but they say that people don't understand them um, and that they wish that they had learned Amir instead. So, you know, I found it really difficult in the beginning that people kept telling me, no, 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 you should be learning MSA don't learn Amir, what are you doing? This is a big mistake. Because of that, it put me so far behind. It made me lose all confidence because you're learning a language that you don't hear people speaking every day. So learn MSA if you want to, learn Amir if you want to. I'm just telling you my personal experience and my personal opinion on the matter. By the way, you're probably gonna pick up a lot of MSA as you go along through your, through your learning process anyway, because you're gonna be reading subtitles, you'll, you'll hear it on the news and things like that. So I wouldn't worry too much about so I wrote recently on Instagram that I had started a journal for my Arabic, not as a kind of workbook, but as a phrase book for myself um, that has all the information that I need for specific contexts. So if I am going, for instance, a visit to meet with um, family or, or something, people are visiting me here, I can go and I have my, my um, phrases. Or if I'm going to the market, um, if I'm going to the souk, I can go and I can check my phrases before I leave the house. And people were really interested. They wanted to see what I've written as my phrases. So I'm going to be splicing in some images of this notebook now. And I will also add some pictures of this in my um, on my Instagram. I'll do a highlight if you ever want to just see the kinds of expressions and phrases that I need to remember and I haven't yet mastered. So after that very long introduction, let's get started. Firstly, YouTube, the best resource that I have found on YouTube for learning Jordanian and Palestinian dialects is Learn Levantine Arabic. There is a girl who creates this content and it is first class, honestly, it's so good. Each video is on a specific subject, a specific experience, context or whatever, 
and she gives you all of the phrases that you might hear in that context. So like going to the market, she has everything from you know asking how much something costs to the kinds of things that people are gonna ask you, questions that people might ask you, um, all the different vocabulary that you may need in that one video. So what I was doing before I had my little notebook, I was going and finding one of her videos on whatever I was about to go and do, watching the video, refreshing my memory, and then going out and feeling like I had kind of armed myself with this information. Second is if you're a little bit more intermediate, then you might want to head over to House of Levantine. And this is where there are stories read in the Jordanian dialect, which is very helpful um, if you are a bit more advanced and you want to practice those listening skills. Apps. So far, I have only found one app that teaches Jordanian dialect. Kalila is an app that I have been using. It's really great. It teaches actually not just Jordanian Arabic. They've got Iraqi, Egyptian. They've got all, like, all different dialects. And I have been learning Palestinian Jordanian dialect through them. It's really, really handy. And again, they teach you those phrases, not just random vocabulary. Podcasts are a great resource if you want to practice those listening skills. Again, my favorite ones and the only ones that I'm aware of, um, they're all really good, is 17 Arabic Made Easier, which is in uh, the Lebanese dialect. And in those podcasts, again, she talks about very specific things from um, the kinds of breakfasts that Lebanese people eat to um, what the weddings are like, um, and you get to practice those listening skills on something that you probably have some kind of experience with as well, which is nice. A new podcast that I've come across is Levantine with Livy, which is fantastic. She's a British girl like myself, and she will tell you at the beginning of the podcasts kind of what she's gonna do in that podcast. She will lay it out like a kind of lesson for you so you don't get lost. First, she'll start off with the translations of specific keywords to that subject, which is really helpful. But she will ring her Arab friend and then they will discuss this chosen subject and uh, he will correct her if she gets anything wrong along the way. So that's, it's really, it's really interesting because it's so interactive. And as well, she will put all of the translations and the transcript and everything in the um, description. Another new one is called The Arabic We Speak. It is by two friends who live in Amman. They are Jordanian, which is great because you get to practice that Jordanian accent. And what they are trying to do is to create free online resources for people to learn Jordanian Arabic. And again, what they do in their podcasts is they have a specific subject, but then they also have a worksheet that comes with it in the um, description. They'll have a little link to this worksheet and you can find the full transcript in both Arabic and English the keywords and then they have like some questions to try and get you thinking that try and get you to kind of engage a little bit with the language so it doesn't feel like just listening skills and you get to practice some of your arabic as well another one is called real arabic again they follow a specific theme for each um, for each podcast but this one isn't um, necessarily about teaching and they talk about wider issues um, political issues cultural issues and it's a little bit more intermediate i find it a little bit difficult to listen to it is really helpful if you are a little bit more advanced and then finally i wanted to include a completely jordanian palestinian podcast it's called salt probably saying that wrong i'm sorry and this podcast is by arabs for arabs it's about issues in the levant in the wider arab region um controversial issues all of these different kind of political things that are going on um but it is again it's by arabs for arabs so if you are advanced to that level it's fantastic listening skills and kind of um, learning a lot at the same time for tv shows you want to look up Roya specifically Roya comedy. Roya is a Jordanian Palestinian um, TV show, TV channel, and they do all different kinds of dramas as well. And a lot of the time they have translations. They have a couple of um, nice ones. One is um, My American Neighbor. So that one has got an American guy who comes to live in Amman. Um, so there's some Arabic, some English in that. It's also quite relatable if you are a foreigner who's come to live with a Jordanian family as well. And you've got Female, obviously, is a very, very famous one. It's um, about, it's about relationships essentially. The last one I'm gonna mention is actually a YouTube channel, but um, I'm including it in this section because it's not a YouTube channel for learning Arabic. It's called Khatira, it's uh, this girl, she talks about very controversial issues. Um, it's very interesting, it's very well produced. Usually they have English subtitles. And then we've got the websites. So um, we've got Transparent Language, they have got a blog all about Arabic language. And if you subscribe to that blog, you will be receiving really well-written, well-researched articles about Arabic language. They do various different series or they do one-off um, one blogs. 
it's fantastic to be honest um, again none of this is sponsored but i really enjoy their posts and they often talk about jordanian um, dialect or they talk about levantine dialect okay and then there's this one that's a little bit hard to explain so essentially there's this book called speaking arabic and it's uh, colloquial jordanian palestinian arabic that was all transliterated into the english into the latin alphabet and then there's this guy called adnan who's gone along and he has taken the entire book all the phrases all the vocabulary and he has translated them back into the arabic script using both Quizlet and Anki, which are both flashcard websites. I'm gonna leave the link below and you can see what I mean, but he's it's essentially this entire book kind of concentrated into these flashcards. I think it's fantastic. It's a really cool thing that he's done. Finally, I'm gonna mention an actual book. It's called Colloquial Arabic by Muhammad al-Masri. This book, I found it online for free, but I don't know if that was legal or not. So I'm not gonna leave the link to it. Um, but if you can go out and buy it, if you can find the ebook, go out and find the ebook. This book is fantastic. And as a Jordanian Arabic learner who very much wants to speak with the G, I have been um, quite excited about this book because it's the only resource that I have found that um, pronounces half as a G, which is um, in the tr traditional Jordanian way. Now, I feel like I don't have enough time to talk about music because I have kind of rambled on, but I have gone on Instagram and asked um, all of my Arab followers if they can tell me their favorite Jordanian dialect singers and I have got quite a nice list now so I'm going to do a link to a playlist that I will make myself um, maybe you can find it up there somewhere or in the description below um, I will make this playlist for anybody who wants to access it and I will also talk about it a little bit on Instagram too and please, if you have anything to add, any resources that I don't know about, I really, really want to know about them, please leave them in the comments below um, and we can see if we can get um, this list kind of expanded upon. And guys, a final question. If you are still here with me, then you're probably the people that I want to be asking. I do a lot of videos about kind of resources that I'm sharing or different kind of lists about just general information. Do you guys want a website or some kind of platform where all of this information is available written um, and maybe is easier to bookmark and things like that. Let me know if that would be something useful to you and if I should be thinking about getting a kind of blog up and running. Okay, thank you for watching. Ma salama. Please subscribe. Bye bye.